Could number, contestant number four please come forward to the stage. Alex Wu, flushing to enlightenment. Alex Wu, flushing to enlightenment. It was a Saturday morning. I had just finished brushing my teeth and I was rinsing with Listerine as usual. But as I reached over to screw the Listerine cup back onto the bottle, disaster struck. My hand slipped. The cup ricocheted off the counter and disappeared into the toilet bowl. I peered over. There was the Listerine cup bobbing up and down in the water. I was in a devil of a spot. What was I supposed to do? Should I make a rescue attempt? Would I ever use that cup again? <laughs> On the other hand, Listerine does kill 99.9% .9 of all germs. <laughs> so I went to the kitchen and returned with one of the last bags Loblaws gave away for free. I wore the bag over my hand as though getting ready to pick up after a dog. And reaching forward into the toilet bowl, I knew that no matter what I planned to do with that cup, I had to retrieve it. Or did I? I did a quick double take and pressed the flush lever. The cup swirled round and round, and as the water in the bowl emptied, the cup slipped through the drain like a fish. At this point, I thought I was a brilliant problem solver. And then the water level started rising and rising. Up and up and up the water went, but down it wouldn't go. I was pooched. In my head, I scrolled through my list of options. I could call a plumber, but that would make me feel like even more of an idiot. <laughs> so an hour later, I returned from Costco with a package of eight plungers. <laughs> and I got straight to work. But as the minutes on the clock ticked by, I'd made no progress. The toilet still wouldn't flush. I sat down on my couch feeling dejected. I could feel myself sinking deeper and deeper into a bottomless pit of anger and frustration. And just when it seemed like things couldn't get any worse, I made my smartest decision all week. I decided to put on some motivational audio tapes. <laughs> In my closet, there's a huge collection of motivational tapes. I had everything from saving your relationship, too late for that one, to overcoming procrastination, I never get to that one. <laughs> but it didn't take long for me to find just the right fit for my mood that morning. Building confidence and self-esteem. The man on this tape started out by saying how one of the best ways to build your confidence, especially right after suffering a setback or a failure, is to take on some small project that you can easily succeed at but still yields tangible results. He continued, I feel better every time I clean my toilets. It gives me a small sense of accomplishment. It prepares me for bigger tasks ahead. So here I'm thinking, great, the motivational tape guy assumes everyone has a working toilet. <laughs> I leave the tape running. I return to the bathroom. I establish a firm grip on the plunger. If the motivational tape guy had inspired me to do anything, it was to have a working toilet, just like everyone else. At least, I would try. The motivational man jumps in here. Remember the words of Yoda. Do or do not. There is no try. He continued. When you have a problem, put your mind to the task. So I sat there contemplating whether the bowl was half empty or half full. When suddenly, motivational man says, there is no I in team. No, but there is one in toilet. I was being energized. Motivational man again interrupts. When you have a problem, dive right in. <laughs> yes, okay, I'll take the plunge. Between plunges, I could still hear his voice in the background. Fail your way forward, he proclaimed. I plunged harder, water splashed everywhere. Thomas Edison failed 5,000 times. 4,995, 4,996. Don't be afraid to get your feet wet. 
4,000. My socks were soaked. <laughs> Never ever give up. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to give up. You see, I had pushed and heaved, pushed and heaved, but the cup was still stuck. I was ready to call it a day. But just a split second before I threw in the towel, motivational man cried, change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. For my benefit, he repeated himself. Change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. That was a pretty novel idea. How could I look at my situation any differently? My mother has never failed to remind me that my birth involved 18 hours of long, hard labor. <laughs> the problem, according to her, was that my head was too big. I was a 10-pound baby, and about 17 and a half hours into the process, she was ready to give up. But boy, am I glad she stuck it through that last half hour. <laughs> Could I do for that Listerine cup what my mother did for me? <laughs> I returned to the bathroom. I picked up the plunger, preparing for a final siege, and raising both hands as a wielding a sword, I looked down into the toilet bowl, and I was floored by what I saw. There, in the little puddle of water that remained, was the Listerine cup. It had made its own way out of the drain. I cradled the cup in both hands like a newborn baby. There's nothing sweet as victory at last, came the booming voice of motivational man. No, there really wasn't. Motivational man was right. It was a modest victory, but already I was feeling more confident. My self-esteem was now higher than the unemployment rate. <laughs> and just like motivational man, I now had a working toilet. <laughs> Madam Chair.